Joining me today is Steve Geller, the Executive Director of SEVCA. So Steve, we've talked about sort of some local issues, but one of the reasons I wanted to have you back is it's the 50th anniversary in the War on Poverty. Mm -hmm. um, and I wanted to get your sort of impressions on where we as a country sort of have gone on this. I, I imagine it's been ebbs and flows. I certainly don't think anybody would say we've won the war. Um, Fair enough. Uh, you know, so, you know, it, I don't know, you know, my question is, you know, what's your, what's your opinion on this? Well, uh, there have been... look back and think it, about it. Right. It's a mixed record. Uh, the truth is that many people don't know because there's been a lot of propaganda, I think that's really the only word to use, that has convinced people that the war in poverty has been lost, was a failure, uh, and that's just absolutely not true. There were tremendous successes uh, in, in those efforts, in anti-poverty programs, when federal government uh, programs were actually uh, active and supporting and, and administrations were actively pursuing those goals. But very soon after, um, you know, presidential administrations backed away from it and even tried to dismantle a lot of the efforts that had already been done. So in the first seven or eight years of the war on poverty, there was an enormous impact. Uh, the, the poverty rate was reduced by more than half in the country. And the rate, that rate has remained pretty steady since that original reduction. We haven't been able to reduce it further because the government backed off of its support for it and the funding continued to dry up year after year. And a lot of our efforts went to trying to fight just to stay alive rather than focus on what more we could do to, to Im increase the impacts of it. Um, so so where, <coughs> where was the rate of poverty in the United States in 1964, 63, and in 72? Where did it mm -hmm. fall to? It went from uh, a little over 22% uh, down to 11%. And where are we today? Today we're hovering up and down, uh, give or take a percentage, at around 15%. So, I mean, we, it went down and we've tracked back up. Tracked back up, and, and, and you, can tr you can trace a lot of that, <clears throat> the, sta the um, uh, stagnance uh, of it, and the, the increase to the lack of support, to the backing off of the original commitment that President Johnson made in 1964 when he declared war on poverty. What, what, what so refresh us from what what was the original commitment that he made? What what was the mission statement then, other than to end poverty? It, it well, that was essentially it in a nutshell. It was to address the suffering that people um, were experiencing as a result of poverty, but much more the emphasis was to, to help people get out of poverty, not just make them comfortable in it, but to move them forward. And, and, a, and a big part of that emphasis also, which, which has not been able to be sustained, is to make sure that the people in poverty themselves had a, had a significant and pivotal role in the development of those strategies to help them get out of poverty. That has often fallen by the wayside just because the resources aren't there to do it, but that was a big emphasis of it. So what were the programs that, have, that haven't been supported as well from, you know, from, say, late 60s, early 70s to today? Well, there's a, there's a whole roster of programs that started out very strong and, and sort of were, were allowed to fade away. Um, housing programs, neighborhood uh, youth uh, core programs, job core programs. Um, uh, something like CETA, which which came out of that and which had its problems, C uh, the, the Comprehensive Employment Training Administration, yep. evolved in many ways to what we have today, the Workforce Investment Act programs. But it was a much more vital and, and integral part of the war in poverty when it started. Um, the uh, uh, legal aid was an initial uh, emphasis, and although that still exists, the funding for that has become much, much less, and it's much more challenged to do its work because of that. Some programs that are still remaining are the community action agencies like SEVCA. Mm -hmm. Head Start was one of the original programs and it's still alive and strong and with demonstrated results that kids attending Head Start end up with much better uh, uh, records in school, are able to keep and earn, uh, keep a job and earn a greater living, stay out of prison uh, to a much greater extent. Yeah. All things that we want as a That's society. That's all that we want. And if, and if that the microcosm of Head Start had been continued to be applied to all the other anti-poverty programs. The the poverty rate may well have been cut in half again from from you know from the its original uh, level of success. So we're out of time in this segment. 